Hey everybody, welcome back to the vlog. Thank you so much for joining me once again for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of Misty Morning and Focus Combination because I like the zing and I like the bergamot. I like it both, both, both. So I put it both together. So if you haven't picked up any of my teas, go check them out over at darkmoonteas.com or you can find them at my website, jchristina.com. And if you subscribe to the channel, which I'd really appreciate you doing, you get 20% off everything that's in your shopping cart over at jchristina.com by using promo code YT20 at checkout. So today we're gonna to be talking about ransomware and Canon getting hit with a ransomware attack and what has kind of transpired during this whole thing. Now, a lot of people don't know what this whole ransomware is. They hear about it on TV and whatnot, but they don't really understand what goes on into it. I wanna to talk to you guys about it a little bit and also just discuss a, just a little bit about cloud and should you be putting all of your eggs in the cloud? And uh, let me just start out by saying the answer to that is absolutely no. And we'll get into that by the end of this video. So what I wanna do is I wanna take you through some of this ransomware stuff because I find it interesting. I'm not only a photographer, I'm a tech head, I'm a system administrator. I know Linux inside and out, Unix from back in the day. That's why I was a Macintosh guy from the very beginning. And when they went to OS X, I was really happy about it because OS X is actually Linux. If you know it or you don't know it, it is. It's Red Hat. It's a previous version um, of Linux. Very old at this point, but it is Linux based, so or Unix based. Anyways, that all being said, you know where I'm coming from here and just want to talk about it a little bit. So let me start out by saying Canon was taken down by Maze. Now Maze does this ransomware thing where they go into larger corporations, they break in, they take over their data, they basically charge them a fee, ransomware, to get their data back. Well, Canon got hit, they got hit pretty hard. Canon states that their email um, servers, their Microsoft Teams were taken down, their websites, many of them, as well as a lot of internal applications were also taken down by this data breach. Look at this list of Canon sites that were taken down. Now, you think to yourself, well, how is it possible that one entity can take down so much of a network, right? Well, it's pretty easy. Um, once you get into the main computer or even any of the computers and get admin access, it's pretty much end of story. Anyways, most of these websites that you see here in this list were taken down and if you would go there, they come up with an error 500 or an internal server error. Basically what that means is there is a database that's missing that can't be accessed or a certain file that can't be accessed, which makes sense because once the ransomware hits, and they take all of the data and they lock it all down. Now all of a sudden those files are gone. They're encrypted and you cannot access them anymore. So that makes sense why you would end up with an internal error like this, an error 500. Now, within a short period of time, internal to Canon, there was a message that was circulated out and it basically reads this. Message from IT Service Center. Attention, Canon USA is experiencing widespread system issues affecting multiple applications, teams, email, and other systems may not be available at this time. We apologize for the inconvenience. A status update will be provided as soon as possible. Confirm receipt. So this is what all of the internal Canon guys got, everyone in the company saying, listen, if you notice that you can't get into your Teams and you can't be working with um, everyone this morning, well, that's why, because Teams is down, your email is down, okay? All of the sites are down, and a lot of those internal applications are also down, because why? Well, the stuff is now encrypted. We don't have access to it anymore. Now what I did is I broke down how these attacks work because some people don't know. Now how this one went down, basically Maze targeted a high profile company like Canon. They target these 
companies, especially ones that have larger bank accounts. That is what's very important. They infiltrate the company's network and gain access to, like I said, an administrative account and their domain controller, their domain servers. Why is that? Well, once they have admin access, now they have access to all of that system as well as all other systems that are connected to that main server, that main system, as well as getting access to their domain server. What that does is allows them to turn off, shut down their websites. Now, websites are not only exterior, but they're interior also. There's a lot of companies that use HTML for doing internal workings, all right? So you have an exterior facing uh, network as well as internal. And once you get access to those domain controllers or domain access, domain server, you can now shut all that down, internal as well as external internally facing as well as externally facing websites, which is really extremely powerful. And then once they compromise that server and gain administrative access to it, all of the unencrypted data that they can find on these servers or connected servers or connected databases or connected file servers, they download all of this data. They basically make a copy of Canon and all of their internals, let's just call it. And once they have these copies of all of this data securely moved over to their server, that's when Maze injects their ransomware script that quickly just distributes itself and copies itself across its network and all networks connected to that specific server. All right, and now it goes and encrypts all of the data that was now downloaded onto Maze's servers. So now that data, all right, is encrypted and the company can no longer use it. So let's say you have a file that's called application.exe. Well, application.exe can no longer be run because now it is encrypted and smashed into a smaller file that has encryption in it, which you can no longer access it. The only way to access your application.exe file is to unencrypt it and then use it right? So they basically encrypt everything, all right? And they do that so that they have one key and that one key they now are the owners of. They basically own all of Canon's data or all the data that they were able to acquire or move over into their server. Now, like I said, all of the company's data is encrypted. They are locked out of it and they are now issued the ransom, all right? The ransom notice. And that notice says either you pay all right. And if you pay, we're going to give you the key to unencrypt your data so that you can use it and no one is the wiser. But if you don't, what we're going to do is leak that data that we stole from you to the world and you will no longer have any access to it, period. That's it. All that data is lost and the confidential data is now pushed onto the public openly so everyone can see that data. And most companies say, holy crap, I can't have that. You know, that sounds like a big lawsuit to me. I might as well pay this. Now, Bleeping Computer is the one that this article comes from, and they were contacted by Maze, and Maze gave them this information. Now, what I think is interesting is Maze provided the document or the information that was given to Canon so that the bleeping computers can look at it. Now, as we can see here, it says, attention, what happened, question mark? We hacked your network and now all files, documents, photos, and databases, and other important data are safely encrypted with reliable algorithms. You cannot access the files right now, but do not worry, you can get it back. You can get it back. I'll get back to that. It is easy to recover in a few steps. We have also downloaded a lot of private data from your network. So in case of not contacting us as soon as possible, this data will be released. If you do not contact us in three days, we will post information about your breach on our public news website. And after seven days, the whole downloaded information. To see what happens to those who don't contact us, Google Southwire Maze Ransomware, MD Lab Maze Ransomware, City of Pensacola Maze Ransomware. After the payment, the data will be removed from our disk and Decryptor will be given to you so you can restore all your files. How to contact us and get my files back? Question mark. 
The only method to restore your files and be safe from data leakage is to purchase a unique for you private key, which is securely stored on our server. Once again, kind of strange wording here. To contact us and purchase the key, you have to visit our website in a hidden tour network. There are general two ways to reach us. Once again, odd language here. One, recommended. Using hidden tour network, download a special tour browser at torproject.org, install the tour browser, open the tour browser, and that's where it gets redacted. Now, obviously, this will be their means of getting to that specific secret site or hidden site and uh, they don't want to show that information because they don't want other people to go there so but obviously we know that bleeping computer does have this information where to go now some people are like what is this tour and this how can they have this secret location or whatnot so basically tour is a non-profit organization and is a 501c non-profit so what this organization does is it has a server where it allows you to freely create small domains off it. They're called dot onion domains and only you and whoever you give access to can go to those domains. All right. Let's just view Tor as GoDaddy. All right. And a name registrar and it has internal names. Now what's different between other ways of doing this, the way Tor does it to be fully out of the loop, it is bi-directionally anonymous. So when you go to one of these onion servers or one of these onion sites, dot onion sites, using the Tor project's browser, all right, it's fully anonymous. Bi-directionally, like I said, it's anonymous, whereas the IP address where you're coming from is not saved and the IP address you're going to doesn't exist because it is a sub internal domain. So is a really smart system. Is it odd or is it something that's, you know, nefarious? Well, yeah, if you're a organization, you can use it for nefarious things, but it isn't. It is a class A version of being anonymous on the web. All right. I could create one of these in Unix probably in a day. All right. It's not really a difficult thing to create. All right. Anyways, regardless, Tor is basically what they're using to be able to have this bi-directional communication with the parties that are being held for ransom. So all this being said, where do we, you know, where do we go with this? It goes back down to the point that I made many, many months ago that the cloud is not secure, period. Anything that you upload into the cloud, you got to understand that that could be released to the public at the drop of a hat. That's just simply the way it is. End of story. Now, just yesterday, I saw a message that came through from image.canon and they talk about how there are images as well as videos that are missing. Now, they claim that this has nothing to do with the ransomware attack, which I think is highly unlikely, but that's what they say. Now, what this message reads is simply this. Thank you for using image.canon. On July 30th, 2020, we identified an issue involving the 10 gigabyte long-term storage on image.canon. In order to conduct further investigation, we temporarily suspended both the mobile application and web browser service of image.canon. After the investigation, we identified that some of the photos and video image files saved to the 10 gigabyte long-term storage prior to June 6th. 16th, 2020, 9 a.m. JST were lost. We confirmed that the still image thumbnails of the affected files were not affected and there was no leak of image data. After having resolved the issue that resulted in the loss of photo and video image files, we resumed image.canon service as of August 4th, 2020. Currently, the thumbnails of these lost images can be viewed but not downloaded or transferred. If the user tries to download or transfer a still image thumbnail file, an error message will be received. We are currently exploring technical countermeasures, so on and so forth. Now, what does this mean? I personally think this has to do with the ransomware deal. They say no. I don't know if this is something that was just in 
let's say, parallel to this ransomware. They had a problem with their image.canon. I really don't know how that all went down, but we do know that the thumbnails obviously are residing on a separate server to the actual long-term storage, 10 gigabyte long-term storage accounts. So they have all of the thumbnails and when you click on a thumbnail, it goes to another server and it downloads that specific file for you. Obviously those files are no longer available. They are gone. So if you're looking for your files over at image.canon and you see the thumbnail and you click on it and it gets an error message, you're probably not going to be able to get those files anymore. Now remember what I said, images stored before June 16th, 2020 at 9 a.m. JST, all of those are gone. So from June 17th forward, we're good. Anything before that, they're just gone. Sorry, you placed all of your important information, your important data, your important photos, your important videos into long-term storage and your long-term storage is now no longer long term, it's gone, okay? So it's sad, it really is sad. And this is not just a Canon thing, this is a cloud thing, all right? This has affected Adobe, this has affected a lot of corporations, a lot of companies that their cloud services get hacked or somehow go down or data breaches happen or there's data losses or whatever. In my personal opinion, all right, I don't believe that you should use the cloud for storing your data that is very important to you, okay? And if you do, you need to have it in two other places. The three place rule, let's call it. If you want it in the cloud, that's fine. Put it in the cloud, but then you also have to have it on another server at your location and another server out of your location in case of fire, okay? Because if you don't, that data is not secure, it's not safe, and it could be gone just like that. And that's exactly what happened here with all of these people's images. Now, I don't use this service, but there's, I'm sure, a lot of people that do. And now, all of the image.canon users that stored their data before that June date, all of their stuff is gone. And if they don't have backups, they're screwed, all right? I mean, look, the R5, the R6 can automatically upload into the cloud as it goes and, you know, People are like, oh yeah, I got it out in the cloud. Now, you know, I just go and format the card and keep on shooting. Then they go into the cloud and they're like, where in the hell are my stuff? It's all gone. That's where it is. It's all gone. All right. It's a big, big deal. A big deal. Now, what I did, guys, is about a year ago, I created an unraid server, a server here internal to the studio. Now, this server I built out of an old PC, a PC that was just sitting around doing nothing. I brought it back to life, blew all the dust out of it, threw in a few parts, and then threw a ton of hard drive space at it. It currently has 30 terabytes of data, and it is an unraid server, so it's kind of a raid, but it's not a raid. I can get into that in another video. Anyways, it is protected data, all right? 30 terabytes of protected data. You're literally three times more data than supposedly what that was stolen from Canon. Anyways, that data stays here in studio and then I make copies of it and put it into the cloud as well as another server at another location. So I have it in three different places. And it is very, very important to do this. You need to be able to house your own data. And for me, putting it all into one server just simply makes sense. Now, I'll probably put in some of my favorite let's say turnkey raid units that are out there. I'll throw it into the pinned comment at the top of this video or in the description or something. Go take a look at them. But those are my suggestions, all right? But for me, I didn't use any of those. What I did is, like I said, I built my own unraid server. It's a DIY thing, a do-it-yourself. And for me, being you know, a system administrator forever, this is extremely easy for me to do. Now, if this is something that you're interested in and you wanna learn how to build an Unraid server, let's say, and you want me to take you through the steps from soup to nuts to beginning to end, I can do that, all right? That's gonna take some time, but I will do that if I get enough requests for it. 
In any event, I personally think that you really need to have a RAID server at your location. All too often, photographers and videographers that have to house terabytes of data understand that it's very difficult to upload it into the cloud, number one, but also the problem is many of us would buy all of these small hard drives. You have two terabytes and a four terabyte and a 10 terabyte, and you have all of these just all piled up all of these hard drives and the bottom line is is you don't know where your data is. Is it on hard drive number 20 or is it on hard drive number 11? And for many years I would put together a catalog so I knew where all the data was. It just becomes just a headache. And as you do more and more and more shooting and the files get bigger and bigger and bigger and the videos get bigger and bigger and bigger, you need more space. And if you do that method where you have all of these small external hard drives all over the place, you're not going to be able to find anything. All right. So putting together some type of server, RAID server or unraid server, I think is an absolute necessity for all creatives currently today because the data is getting to be so vast, so massive. So anyways, I hope you got something out of this. I think it's kind of sad what happened with Canon, but like I said, all companies that have large bank accounts are not immune. And this, let's say, organization, all right, will hit another one and another one and another one. That's just it. Maze is an organization that does ransomware and they do it well because large corporations have paid them. The city of Pensacola here in my state of Florida paid them. A lot of organizations will pay to get their data back because they know the ramifications of not getting their data back. I personally think that it's sad that any corporation as big as Canon doesn't have multiple servers at different locations. So if one gets infected, there is another one that can't be turned on at a moment's notice, All right? There's ways of doing that, all right? I'm gonna get into security, but there's ways of making duplicates of entire networks Okay, through VMs, through virtual machines, through different means so that they are, let's call them in the dark web, offline, let's call it, on a specific IP that is not published. And at any time that can be turned back on and those affected systems can be just shut down and the other ones rolled over. All right, there's ways around it through security. But obviously companies are not doing it. All right, they, they go the easy route or they hire these security individuals that are really don't know what they're doing. They do basic security and that's it. When something like this happens, it's it's impossible to fix, all right? They say they're looking into this and looking into that and there's no looking into it. Once your data is encrypted and locked down, it's done. Until you get that key, it's done. It would take countless ages to be able to de-encrypt this. So that's really about it. If you haven't downloaded my ebook, 10 Tips at Making Sharper Images, Tack Sharp Images, go check it out over at jchristina.com forward slash ebook. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash ebook. 10 Tips at Making Sharper Images, something there for everyone, amateurs and professionals. It's free. Go pick it up. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash ebook. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. It would really mean a lot to me, the channel, the YouTube gods. Throw it a big thumbs up. That's helpful. Anything that you can do is extremely appreciated. And also those links that I put into the comment area as well as the description, I'll put them as my link. So if you go there, I might get 20 cents. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe two cents if you end up buying anything. But I don't have affiliates with any of these products or any of the corporations or any of the companies. So it is what it is. Click on them if you want. If not, then that's fine also. So that's it, guys. I am out of here for yet another vlog. I hope you got something out of this. And don't forget to head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. I would really appreciate it. That's really about it. Once again, throw it a big thumbs up if you enjoyed the content or if you got a little bit out of it. I'm out of here for yet another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe and stay healthy.